Hey doing everyone, back in the car on a Saturday morning. Hot, sweating like a dog because I've got the two front windows closed so I can get some good sound and the back windows open. Um, Jamel Charlo versus Canelo Alvarez. Interesting fight, a real interesting fight. You know, Charles has been asking for this opportunity for a long time. Um, believes he has the beating of Canelo. Let me go back a little bit. When this first fight was first signed, I thought it was his brother who was going to get the fight. When I heard it was Jamal, I was like, all right then. Undisputed, yes, but at 154, it's a big weight jump. There's issues there. But those issues kind of changed for me a little bit after I watched the interview with Canelo, individual interviews, but on the same channel with Canelo and Jamal on The Breakfast Club. They had um, Ak from The Zone, they're helping with some of the boxing bits on there. And basically, the comments, there was a conversation between Canelo and Ak and the guys on The Breakfast Club saying how small Canelo is. And The general consensus was is that Canelo is the size of a 154 pounder and Jamal is actually bigger structurally than Canelo. And I thought, mm, I'm not sure about that. And then I started looking at their fights. I started looking at their body structure, their frame, the press conference and everything. And I think there's a fair argument that Jamal is the structurally the bigger person. Obviously, Jamal has never fought at this weight class. Canelo has gone as high as 175. And I thought, that's an interesting fact. That's interest. that's not fact, that's an interesting element. But we need to see it in fact. So again, I started thinking about the fight. I started thinking about certain things. And I went back and I remember when, as much as Canelo's fought at 175, where he beat, Kovalev I remember there was a time when Canelo was at 154 and he was saying GGG is too big for him he needs to grow into the weight class he needs to grow into the weight class and when he's ready he'll be ready if you're 154 and you avoided GGG for all those years until you felt you were grown into the weight class then you fought guys at 168 and minus Callum minus Callum Smith who's obviously about 6'3", 6'4". You look comparable with size but then you went to light heavyweight and then you beat Kovalev. Yes, Kovalev was on the slide. But when you fought, when you fought Bivol, the size thing was evident. The point I'm making is, is that Canelo's fought at the higher weight classes, at the bigger weight classes and seems to be the bigger, stronger man naturally or unnaturally, depending on who you speak to listen to. But maybe Jamal is equal to or bigger naturally than Canelo, which means this jump up from 154 to 168, maybe not as big as it sounds on paper. Another thing came to my mind while I was sitting down thinking about this fight. It was activity. Um, through injury, I believe it was injury, and always through COVID, Jamal hasn't been that active. And he's had maybe three fights in the past three, four years. He was active, obviously, up until COVID pandemic. So I think the last time he fought more than twice a year was 2019. We're now in 2023, obviously. That may have a significant benefit for Charlo because within that time naturally as you get a bit older as you're not fighting yes you're still training but you pack on the pounds um good pounds not nope, i don't mean in a negative way good pounds um anyone that trains anytime you're eating well you're training well even doing good cardio you hit the scale a month or two later you're like oh didn't realize that 
because you feel good, you look good, but you put on a bit extra because you know you're being active. Um, I believe Charlo's a bit of a gym rat. He likes being in the gym. He likes staying in shape. I believe that naturally he would have put on a bit of extra size over those inactive periods over the past two, three years that will now help him, I believe, in this fight. When I first started looking, I said when this fight was first announced, I was clearly on the Canelo side. Oh, oh, this is a wash for Canelo, like it's too small. And like I said now, that, that belief has changed. I believe it is more of a balanced fight. I don't... I consider myself a reasonably smart person with boxing. And when I say reasonably smart, I can read between the bullshit. Um, I don't know it all. Um, there's a strong contingent of people out there, especially in America, that believe Canelo doesn't like certain styles of fighters. This means black slick fighters that have that, that a bit of swagger to their style of boxing. They believe that from the Mayweather fight, um, Canelo Pro had problems and didn't like it. There were problems with the Austin Trout fight. There was problems with the Shandy Lara fight. And people can't believe he's avoided that style of fighting. I don't believe Charlo has the slick, silky skills as a Mayweather or a Shandy Lara. I do have him more in the Austin Trout type of style of fighting. I think Austin Trout was a tremendous fighter. I really like Austin Trout's style and the way he moves and the way he puts things together. Um, and there's a belief that this style is going to hurt or be a hindrance to Canelo. I believe Canelo had problems in those fights. I think those problems in those fights were... I think the problems in those fights were stylistic problems, but also a bit of experience problems. And when I say experience problems, Canelo's had an extensive amateur career, turned pro when he was like 15, 16. He's seen it all. So when I say experience type style, is whereas certain fighters, like the likes of um, Mayweather, who's obviously... I'm not going to talk about Mayweather. We all know what Mayweather is all about. Um, but even like Lara, they know how to undress fighters and take away their abilities. It's not that it's a certain style they don't like. It's a way they limit your attributes and make you think twice. That split second of thought causes a problem. Because when you have that split second of thought, when you're trying to work it out, that's when you get hit. I like to think that over the years since those fight, Canelo has evolved. Um, Billy Joe Saunders, who obviously is not black, um, he has a very slick style, yeah? And he gave Canelo a bit of problems, but Canelo adapted and dealt with it, and then obviously the injury. But it was a fight that, if I remember correctly, it was competitive for the first few rounds, and then Canelo kind of worked it out, and then obviously done the damage. Um, Like I said, the, the, the Canelo is slick himself. But I think it's when Canelo cannot do what he wants and he cannot get off the shots he wants, which causes him a bit of a problem. Um, even though this is a different reason why, similar with the um, Bivol fight, he couldn't get off what he wanted, which caused him a problem, which, made, which was a split second delay, which got Bivol to just get off first all the time. Obviously, and the fact that Bibble's a naturally bigger, stronger, longer, rangier person. So all those things added into it and played into it. So, yeah, it's a tough one. Um, I like Charlo. I think he's really talented. I think he's really good. I think he's earned his spot. Um, I remember when you knocked out Erickson, Erickson Lubin, and I was really high on Lubin. And I was like, how the hell did he do that? I mean, like, Charlo is... He's a different animal within his own right. Just a sidestep before I go further and get on prediction. I believe Terence Crawford is pound for pound number one in the world. I have no question about it. That's my, that, 
I've, I've been saying this for the longest time, even before the Spence fight. But I'm a bit old school when it comes to boxing. And I do think there's an argument or a conversation that Canelo could be or should be in that conversation still. I know we've got Inui there as well. And I, the reason why I say that is that I don't believe a loss ruins a career. This new generation of boxing believe, you know, you've got to be undefeated like Floyd Mayweather. I don't believe that at all. I believe iron sharpens iron. I think there's no shame in Hagler losing to Leonard, Leonard losing to Duran, Duran losing to Hagler hands. Uh, you get my point, round robin. The best fight the best, and when the best fight the best, that's what happens. If you look at Oscar De La Hoya, you look at Trinidad, you look at um, Bernard Hopkins from our generation, and if you look at Pass, look at Lennox Lewis, look at Tyson, look at Holyfield, they all lost. That's part of the package of fighting. You fight the best, you will lose. And obviously, thinking that Canelo is a smaller man, and we are talking about that pound for pound element, Canelo has the best resume in boxing right now, hands down in my opinion. I wouldn't even argue that with anyone. And the point I'm making is, is that if because you lost to Bivol, who was clearly bigger, stronger, obviously beat you fair and square, but obviously you're talking about this powerful pound where you're talking about a guy who's possibly naturally still a 154 pounder. That's what Canelo and, back, um, and Ak said in this interview. And um, Considering that if he is a 154er naturally, even now I could fight at 154 today or 160 today, for him to go up to 175 and lose shouldn't hurt your standing or where you are within the career, in your career with your historical value. And we are on the pound for pound list because you're pushing boundaries. You're still unified, undisputed at multiple weight classes. So your credentials are there. The point I'm making is, If Charlo beats him, Charlo should get the credit of beating an elite pound for pounder who possibly could have an argument of being top of the division. As much as I rate Crawford, and I think Crawford's number one pound for pound, as much as I rate Inui, you've got to look at Canelo's record and, his, and his, the resume and how he's fought and who he's fought and the uh, challenges he's overcome in each weight class from 154, 160, 168, 175. It's a lot. And I think that we shouldn't look at the loss to Bivol as a negative, but as a positive in terms of he's challenged himself, he's done all these things, and he still is an elite, high level, top of the food chain, number one, number two, number three type, pound for pound fighter. I now believe this is a real fight. I don't believe it's a wash for Canelo. I actually see it as a trouble fight for Canelo now. Cause like I said, I don't think Canelo is as big as his record or his resume assumes him to be. It's hard to bet against a guy like Canelo when you've got a record like Canelo. But it's also hard not to realise there are other aspects to the fight where as good as you are, people can capitalise on. Which makes it hard for me to make a decision. I never plan these videos, you know this way. I never ever plan, I never ever script. That's not my style. So I'm giving you my decision on this fight off my head what I think right now. I don't see a stoppage or a knockout for either person. However, I think Canelo's experience with the higher level opposition, being in the ring with other greats in the later rounds makes the makes the makes a difference. I believe Canelo is in a highly competitive close fight up to round 
six, seven, maybe eight, possibly behind on points and come back and takes it in the later rounds, possibly by a split decision. Yeah. Charlo's gonna start fast. He's gonna try to start hard, try to establish some respect early. Cause you know if Canelo gets in that momentum, it's kind of a downward spiral. Once he tries, once he gets that respect and kind of takes away the momentum, it'll be a bit of a chess match, mid rounds, and it'll be nip and tuck on how you like it. Would you like the faster, flashier work from Charlo, or would you like the stronger, heavier shots from Canelo? Canelo's got great footwork. He likes to cut you off and get you to the body. Um, and it'll be close, but I think the decision maker will be those final two, three rounds where Canelo brings it back and takes a split decision victory. All right, fellas, that's my, precision, my prediction on Canelo versus Charlo. I'm trying a new mic today, so I hope this mic is a bit better. The sound quality, hopefully, fingers crossed. And um, expect another video tomorrow. Um, if plans go to head, um, new weekly show. Um, still ain't got a name for it. It's basically, gonna be this week in boxing, obviously, with me and a new host joining me. Um, watch this space. Have a good day, fellas.